Welcome to day 13 of the 2023 Advent of Code. So for today's problem, we've arrived at the edge of Lava Island. We don't see any lava though, we see a bunch of ash and rocks, and we discover that there are a bunch of mirrors. We know that some of the mirrors have fallen out of the frames and they're really flat and shiny so it's hard to see where they are. So we note down the patterns of ash and rocks marked as dots and pound signs and we want to locate the mirrors by analyzing these designs. So to find the reflection in each pattern, we need to find a perfect reflection across a horizontal line or across a vertical line. Fortunately, we don't have to deal with diagonals here. Also very fortunately is that we only need to consider mirrors between two rows, so we don't need to consider cases where the mirror is like in the middle of a row. So that makes things a bit easier for us. Looking at the first pattern, we see that the reflection occurs between the fifth and sixth column. Looking at the second pattern, we see that the reflection occurs between the fourth and fifth row. And so to obtain the pattern notes as a summary, we're going to add up the number of columns to the left of each vertical line. So basically we're going to add up each column index, and then we're also going to add up the row indices and multiply that by 100. And finally, we'll get the total sum. So our input is in the form of many grids that are provided separated by two new lines. So we can say for block in open zero dot read to grab all the input and then split on double new line. Then we can let grid equal block dot split lines. And so now we have our grids as arrays of strings. Let's define a utility function to find the mirror. We'll make this function only search the rows and we'll use a different method to search the columns later. We'll basically flip the grid diagonally and call this function again as it'll give us the same result. So we'll iterate through each row index. We'll start at one and the reason we start at one is because if we were to start at zero, then we would have the entire grid under the mirror. And so there would be nothing above. And as in this problem, any rows or columns that don't have an equivalent pair are just considered to match. Uh, for example, here row one would match a fictitious row eight, and so it's ignored. Then if we had one side empty, it would always be considered a match. So we need to start at one. We'll let above equal everything in the grid up until row R and below be everything after. Now, in order to check for equality, we're going to flip one of them and then check each element within the first n items where n is the shorter of the two arrays. But which grid do we, which one do we flip? So let's suppose we have a grid and we cut it, we put the potential mirror close to the top. If we were to flip the bottom one, then what we would get is that the actual matching point, let me mark this with color so it's a bit easier to understand. So this is the outer edge of our reflective area. If we flip the bottom one, then we would end up with something looking roughly like this. We see that the red lines don't match up, which makes lining them up difficult. However, if we were to instead flip the top array, then what we would get is something looking like this. And we see that they will line up, so this is easier to work with. Now, if we instead suppose that we have the potential mirror in the bottom half of the grid, then if we were to flip the top row, uh, the top block, what we would get is essentially something looking like uh, this. And so the red still lines up, and so all we need to do is truncate off the section that does not overlap. And so flipping the top half of the array is what we want to do here, not the bottom half. So we're going to flip it by just using this syntax. In Python, what this means is the first element of a slice is where we start and the second is where we end. If you leave both empty, it just means slice the whole array. And then this is the step value. A step value of negative one means it will start at the end and go forward instead of starting from the beginning and going, uh, oh, sorry, it would go backwards if you have a negative step value. And so now we can just say, um, we're going to make above up until the length of below. So basically we're going to trim off anything that does not exist in both. Um, in Python, if you take the slice of an array with a value that's larger than the total number of elements, it just won't modify the array. 
And so this basically makes them both equal to the shorter of the two. And so if the two halves are equal, then we return r. And so now we can say row equals find mirror grid, total plus equals row, or rather total would equal uh, plus equals row times 100. And then we'll want to find the column. So to transpose the grid, what we can do is in Python, what the zip function does is it takes in multiple arrays and it iterates through them column by column. So first it gives us a tuple comp uh, containing the first element of each list, then a tuple containing the second element of each list, and so on. And so we essentially want to call it on each row of grid like so, but we don't know how many rows there are. And so what we can instead do is call it using the splat operator, which is a star. And what this essentially does is it expands out grid and inserts each element into the function. So it's the same, it's functionally the same as doing this. Okay, so zip star grid, that'll give us a zip object, but we need it as a list, so we can just call list on it. And so to find the column index of the mirror, we can just call find mirror on the flipped grid. And so now we've taken our grid and we've flipped it across the diagonal axis. And so now when we find a row mirror, when we put it back in our original form, we've really just found a column mirror. And so it's the same thing. And so finally, we just need to print out the total. And, oh, I forgot a final condition. If we do not find anything, we can just return zero because we're taking the sum. So if we don't find anything, adding a zero is essentially the same as doing nothing. And so that gives us our answer for part one. For part two, we see that every mirror has exactly one smudge where one dot or pound sign should be the opposite type. Okay, and so we'll need to find and fix the smudge that causes a different reflection line to be valid. Now, instead of looking for a reflection line where the values on either side are equal, we're looking for one where the values on either side have exactly one issue. We don't need to identify the position of the smudge. All we need to do is obtain the same summary using the new reflection lines. All we need to do is change this condition. We're going to use zip again. What we're going to do is we're going to look through each corresponding row or column. So we'll do zip um, above and below. And since the zip function will cut out any extra values that do not line up to anything. So if we zip these two together, we'll only get two iterations and this one just gets ignored. We can actually remove the truncation here because this will only go through the rows or columns that line up. So we can say for x, y in zip above and below. This will iterate such that x is the first row of above and y is the first row of below. And then x is the second and y is the second row, etc. We'll want to find the number of differences. And so since we know that x and y are going to be lists of characters of the same length, we can say for a, b in zip x, y. And so now essentially what we've done is for each block and for each row in the block and for each item within that row, we're now comparing character by character our above and below sets. And so the condition is if A is equal to B, then we record that as a zero, otherwise we record that as a one. And then if we take the sum, now this tells us the number of mismatches in the nth row. And now if we sum that up for each row, this tells us the number of mismatches within the entire reflection. And so only if this is strictly equal to one, we consider it a match. And so all we needed to change for part two was the condition. And so that gives us our answer for part two. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed.